Hey everyone, I'm Elif. Welcome to a new video. I'm pretty excited for today's video because I have wanted to do this for a while. We are going to take a look at my Notion content station. Currently, I call it my content station. It is basically my content planner, my content calendar. I want to take you through how I use my board, how I plan my content within my content planning board and how I also map them out on a calendar as well. So in the past, I used to do this using spreadsheets and some templates that I have, which are also very strong. But over the course of time, I just wanted to simplify things for myself. I wanted to use less and less tools and have a better, more efficient and a system that really works for me and that I really, really enjoy using. And I wanted to combine a couple of different tools that I was using for note taking, for project management, for team management, and for content calendar. Initially, my Notion journey started when I was just curious to see if it could replace Evernote for me. As soon as I started to switch things over from Evernote to Notion, I realized that there's so much more potential using Notion. And shortly after that, I found myself searching on YouTube how to better use Notion and how to create this, how to create that, how to link a page. And with all the information I was seeing, I got really tempted into moving everything into Notion and quickly I was in the zone and I was pulling all the information from other systems and tools that I was using previously and putting them into Notion. So that's a little summary of how I transitioned into Notion and I know a lot of other people are also moving to Notion, especially creators, especially people who work with smaller teams like myself. They prefer Notion a lot more than rather more complex project management or team management software. I mean, this video isn't really about Notion itself. It's really more so about my content calendar and how I plan my content using Notion. So it may not be ideal for everyone, but this is what works for me at the moment. And I really like using it. So if you are interested in exploring Notion and if you want to start off by creating a content planner for yourself, then this is a great tool and maybe check this video out until the very end so that you can see if the system is going to be useful and efficient for you as it is for me. This style of visualization that we're looking at currently, this is actually a very typical template that a lot of other creators use and it's not original to me. It's called a Kanban board, which literally means a sign board, a visual board. It is a visual way to move around different tasks that you have or different items that you have in your table. So how I start off my content planner is I have a board for ideas, which is the longest board that I have. So there's many, many ideas there. Some are stupid, but I don't care. So this is the place where I put things so that I don't forget them. So I have a lot of ideas here and when time comes, sometimes I delete them. Sometimes they don't make any sense for me in the future. Uh, if I haven't written any notes in them. And sometimes they have just outdated. And then there are some other times where things become more relevant and I decide to take that idea and actually start to write about it. So currently I have 78 things in the ideas folder and five in the writing in progress. So this is also how I track the status of every piece of content that I'm working on. Currently I have five that are writing in progress and I'm not going to go into these ones, but I will show you how the template looks when I click into each of these little items here. So the next step is script is ready for review. So either I have written it or if I have a team member working on the script, uh, the post, then I will review it here. Usually it's all me who writes all the scripts for YouTube. So it's just my way of tracking where I'm at with that piece of content. So when I review it, I just move it to ready to film. And this usually is empty because as soon as I film it, they are already moved over here. Actually, this one I am currently filming so let's just put that right there again uh, this one has been filmed and as soon as I assign it to my editor and he is actually working on this one so I will move it to editing in progress and I will also show you how that looks inside of these items too in a moment and then once the video is live they are listed down here and as you'll see there are 
clearly more details when it comes to video live portion of my table. Next up is if we haven't simultaneously written a blog post for that YouTube video, then this phase of blog writing begins. So currently it's Sammy who's writing the blog post, or if it's me, I will then move it and just assign it to myself as well. But if any of these are in writing in progress, then we move them over here. So once that is done, obviously I move them to revision or Sammy moves them to our ready for revision section. And then once I review it, they are ready to move to WordPress. So this is just kind of like a confirmation from me to Sammy or to any other team member that I may work with in the future that I've reviewed it, it's fine, you can now move it to WordPress. So she will create it in WordPress and then once it's ready to go live, it's blog post live. And then there are some other cases where we've written a blog post, it's live, it's been on the website for a while, but I recognize that there is more potential, there is more things that we could write for that blog post or sometimes there is a statistic that needs update so those ones move over here and they are in the phase for updates so that's pretty much it in terms of the statuses so right now let me go into this one and show you how the template actually looks so all of these are pages within my kanban board so each item that i write are created as a page so if i just say open as a page it, it just makes it full screen for me which is just easier so i have all of these different properties here to basically tag the content items and make it easier and basically create a database for myself so i have the different content types right here but usually i only work on the youtube videos and the blog posts in this section so we're not necessarily going to see the other social media platforms posts here anyway so there are the statuses that I have that you've just seen in the Kanban board if we mark them here they will just automatically move to the next phase or wherever it is applicable so this is also another section where we can uh, mark the status for and then I also have a couple of different video genres which I mark right here and this wasn't something I did in the past with the very early content items that I had but I just optimize it as I went along and now I feel pretty good about the template that I use and whenever I realize there is an extra need to add a new property then I will do that but right now this is it so this is the current like working video title this is obviously not published so this isn't the final one but as soon as the video is published I put the original the actual a live video title, the YouTube URL, the analytics URL for future easy access. I create it, uh, I assign it to the team members. If there's a sponsor that I'm working with, then they will live here. And I can also create, so these were two that I worked in the past. I have not done this for all the videos that I did. So we only see two of them. For this one, it's the email promo we're looking at. So it's either send, scheduled, needs to be written. I just know if we have ever mentioned it in the newsletter, I'm trying to make it a habit to do the newsletter every single week, but there are some weeks where I have to skip it. So this is where I kind of keep track of that. So let's just say needs to be written. And then once Sammy starts working on the blog post draft, then she will put the Google Docs URL that she's working on right here. And then once the blog is live, we put the URL, the final URL here. And when I upload the footage for editing, this is where I will put the drive link uh, again, so that is pretty much it in terms of how I kind of use the system to tag everything and know what this content is about. Anyway, so let's move on to the details of my template on how I create it. So this isn't like unique to me. I have watched many, many videos in the past and I kind of came up with the ideal one that works for me currently and it's always a work in progress so if i realize that i actually don't use a section that i have in my template i will just go ahead and delete it or i will add something else so this is uh what i'm working with currently so i have the title idea section where i just list down a couple of different ideas and this wasn't again something that i did every single time in the past. I'm now trying to do this more and more because I think it is helpful. It just 
gets me to brainstorm different keywords together and research those keywords on YouTube search engine. So that's a new practice that I'm trying to embrace. And then I have the content section where I have the script. These are all toggled buttons. Most of the times I have something, like I have a list of bullet points. Sometimes I have a full script. Sometimes I have no script and I just wing it like I'm doing this one. And then if there is any CTA to download something, then that will live here. And sometimes, to be honest, I don't think of the CTA in advance and then I just put it later on. So that could also happen and I could put it later. And then once I'm watching the edited version of the video, I start typing in the timestamps here. Right now I don't have it because this video is currently being filmed, but I will put down the timestamps as I'm watching the edited version of the video and then I always use that in the description. Then I have the cards which are the video links that I will tag throughout my video. So this is what that is about. And then I have tags. Sometimes I copy and paste it from a previous video that I have or sometimes I just write it from scratch and sometimes I just won't have anything in the tag section in my template because I just create it real time as I'm uploading the video. That is it. And then resources section. Sometimes I have inspiration for this topic or a style of a video that I want to kind of get inspiration from. So it can be either my uh, resources for statistics, it can be inspiration in terms of the topic, or it can be inspiration in the sense of the style of the video. And then I have B-roll ideas shots. This is something I'm very recently trying to incorporate into my system. I actually don't know how to shoot B-roll, or maybe I do, but I don't feel as comfortable doing B-roll, and I find that I never have time to actually film the B-roll. So this wasn't something I did in the past. I really, really want to start using more B-roll within the video. So I'm trying to force myself into creating this list and getting shots for these different things. Then I have a checklist section which isn't complete, it's just a very, very preliminary one that I have currently. I should expand it to be honest and if I do, it will be much more useful. But at the moment, I just have the YouTube thumbnail, blog post, IG post, LinkedIn post, newsletter, and if I get all of those, yay, it's a big achievement. <laughs> And then as I upload the footage into my drive folder, I will have some notes for uh, Leandro, my video editor, and he will just check the notes that I have here. And if there is any inspiration that we're taking, any specific text that I want included, he will take a look at them right here. All right, so that is how I plan my content and track the status for each piece of content. There is one more thing that I want to show you. Let me go back and find the content calendar that I want to share with you. So this is something that I would like to use a lot more and a lot more seriously. But at the moment I do this, when I remember I have a content calendar, usually because it's just me working on my content and because I need to do everything very quickly with my current schedule, I don't have time or I don't prioritize, let's say, to put my content in a calendar. But I really want to make this a usual practice that I do for every single piece of content because I want to see on which day I publish what for which platform. So this is me trying to make an effort. And as you see, I mean, I had a video go live last week on Thursday. Clearly, I don't have it here. So this is still a work in progress, but this is a very, very easy template that you can use. I basically added a calendar and then within the calendar, I just, you know, if you click on add an item, it creates one of these little pages for me. So let's go ahead and check this one out, for example. So for each item that I kind of open in my calendar, I have the same properties. This is, for example, the minimal home office tour reels that I published yesterday on Instagram. Okay, so this one is if I want to take the URL of that content that I published on whatever social media platform or the blog and put it here, this is where I would do that. And then this one is more relevant. So I want to show you that, but because there is no relevant content page for this one, I will just skip to a different content piece. Let's go to this one. So this is a video. What I did is on April 15th, I published all of these different content formats around this topic, which is tips to stand out in an interview. And then what I do here is this is a relationship. So I have to be honest, I haven't quite figured out how to 
work with relationships and databases within Notion, which is a great feature. I know a little bit about it, but I haven't fully figured it out. So this is my attempt at making it work. Content page, this is basically, if we go into it, it's a relation. So if I choose this property type, you'll see that it's a relation and I just named it as content page because when I click on it, it is related to the content planning and status database that I have. So the relationship is built with the content planning and status database or board. And if I search for a page, so let's say I was uh, searching for this one. So it's called, it has the keyword notion in it. So if it was this one, for example, how to create a content calendar, for free using Notion, then I would click on this one and it would create a relationship with that content page. But right now this one is correct. So let's go ahead and if I wanted to check it out, it showed me which content this is related to. So if I click on that, I can directly go into the page that has all the information about this content piece that I am talking about right there. And if you come over here, if you scroll down over here, you'll also see that there is a relationship here as well in my template. So this says related to the monthly publishing and I can also click on this and it will take me to the calendar item as well. So you can see that you can kind of go back and forth between the calendar and the planner that you have, if this is the way that you're going to create it. Basically, you can draw those relationships. You can also change the view of your boards as well. So I didn't need to add a new view before, but this is where you would add that. So if I wanted to change this calendar into a list, this is how it would look like. Hopefully I can now figure out how to do it the other way around. Okay, I can now move back to this. So see, you can add different views and you can kind of filter your different view types using this little menu right here. So I want the calendar view, this is what I prefer, and this is what we are looking at right now. So that's about it. So that is basically the content station and the content calendar. These are the two main templates, the boards that I use to plan my content and then to plan whenever they are going live. And as I said, I just need to make a better effort in using the calendar and seeing when which content is going live because that is going to be helpful for me in the end. Anyway, so that is a tour of my content planner and my content calendar that I created and that I love using through Notion. I love that I can write my uh, scripts right here. I can create different properties to see it as a database and kind of have all the information that I need about each content item in just one single place. And the other bit that I really like is being able to tag team members and work with them and kind of comment back and forth using Notion instead of switching to another system, talking to them in another communication platform, and then coming back here to do the work. So this is why I really like it. I'm aware that there are stronger tools in terms of team management, but as I said, if you are a small team or if you're a solopreneur or if you are a creator, if you're a marketer who is trying to learn how to do content planning, I think Notion covers a good amount of things that you need to do for content planning as a content creator. In my case, it enabled me to eliminate Evernote, the Notes app, Trello, Asana, and Slack in most cases. So that's why I love it so much. Anyway, this is my tour. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to click the like button for me and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. So that's it for me today. That's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Take care guys. Bye-bye.